But yes, that's how it starts Sonat number no. 2, written by Frédéric Chopin. Actually, it is his first published sonata. But because when he was a student, he wrote another sonata, that's why we call it Sonata Number no. 2. Welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. As you know, today we have a true masterpiece. If you are here, I'm sure you know it. Or if you are not familiar with this, I'm jealous. Because it must be fascinating to experience it for the first time. It, it seems not to be a Chopin, right? Definitely, it sounds like some other composer. S such a drama, such a desperation. Incredible. Yes, to understand why this sonata, especially the first movement and the second movement also, but the whole sonata in general, is so uh, strange and different, we have to connect this to Chopin's life. So please let me make a short introduction. First of all, I hope you do know my video about sonata form. There is a short introduction video, about 12 minutes I think, where I explain in a very simple words what is the sonata form, what the construction is. I strongly recommend you to watch it before you watch this video because I'm not going to repeat myself and I will just use these words that I was using in this video explaining the structure of this fantastic piece. Today we focus on the first movement of the sonata because sonata is the fourth movement work. I decided to make a, a video about each movement uh, because Otherwise, the video about the whole sonata would have to last about three hours, I think. Maybe, maybe less, but still more than two. Anyway, as I said in my introductionary video, the whole sonata is the piece that consists on four movements or three movements usually. But in fact, we have to know that when Beethoven the king of piano sonatas, or a god of piano sonatas, who wrote 32 piano sonatas, who uh, improved this genre to such an extent that it was practically impossible to continue what he did. When he died, there was a big problem. All the young romantic composers had a problem. They didn't know how to write sonata because they didn't know whether they should still try to continue what Beethoven did or to open something new. And this is the main reason why we don't have a composer in the, from the mainstream composers of Romantic era who wrote many sonatas. Chopin, only two published sonatas. Schumann, three sonatas. Liszt, only one sonata. Well, and so on. Well, this is the reason. The reason was they had to construct something else. Uh, they didn't want to be compared so much and they didn't know how. There were two different groups of composers. One group of composers decided that the sonata must change completely. There is no point in trying to continue the tradition of Beethoven. So they had to experiment. Like for example, Franz Liszt, who wrote the sonata, which has only one very long movement. There is a one movement sonata, right? Another composers, neoclassic we can call them, like Chopin, decided that they still can compose a romantic piece of music, but put it in the cage of the sonata form and sonata structure. That's how it was, but it was not easy. Because, as I said, it is a kind of cage for the composer, because he must think about the structure, which must be at least similar to what Beethoven did. And still, he had to express himself and write in the style of Romanticism. So, now a few words about Chopin and this sonata. He started 
First, he composed the Funeral March, which now is the third movement of this sonata. It was the year 1836. First, Chopin got engaged to a beautiful woman, Maria Wodzińska. So we can say he was happy. Yes, indeed, he was happy for a little bit. But shortly after, his health collapsed terribly. He, his tuberculosis got a very severe and heavy um, and he was almost actually dying. This was the first really time when he felt he can die. So what he did? He wrote a funeral march as a kind of his own, the march for his own funeral, maybe the feeling of death and or maybe the funeral of all the Polish who died on the uprising. This we will never know. But the piece is definitely very sincere and very serious and very, very special, very touching. He didn't decide to publish Funeral March as a separate piece. So maybe he was thinking about the sonata already, but he didn't start it yet. He hadn't started yet. It had to pass three more years. And what happened during these years? Well, he didn't die. That's the first thing. He got better with his health for some time, but his engagement collapsed. They didn't want him. The family, the parents of the bride, decided that there is a better man for a husband. Some officer, I think. And for Chopin, his heart was completely broken. His dreams of having family, normal family, collapsed completely. So we can just imagine how desperate he was. He was really depressed. Then his health again collapsed when he left, uh, when he went with Georges Sau. Well, he met Georges Sau, but it was not a dream woman for him at all. Of course, it doesn't mean he was not happy with her. He didn't like her or something like that. Not. But this was not what he dreamt of when he was young. They left for Mallorca. Already the idea of Sonata probably started, but then his health again collapsed very much. Again collapsed so much that he was almost dying. All this, uh, I mean, this, this Sonata is the witness of all this, what happened in Chopin's life that time. And we have to know it. We must know it, because this music comes straight from Chopin's heart. It's not the objective music. It's a very subjective music. That's why this piece doesn't really sound like a typical Chopin. That's why this opening that I just played for you doesn't sound like a typical Chopin. We have a very rhetoric mm, motif at the very beginning of this sonata. This interval, uh, the seventh, uh, the diminished seventh, I will think we call it in music, these two notes, it exactly in this, this um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's like actually nine notes counting all the keys. Uh, going down, it was already used in the Baroque as a symbol of death. You can find it in Bach music a lot, in the, especially in Passions. Passion, as you know, this is the music for the uh, Jesus Christ death and death road and, and the cross. I found one, the fugue from Bach, Prelude and Fugues in A minor, when he is using the symbol of a cross. Exactly. Bach was using this because that was the time of Baroque that music was a symbolic. This fugue is very dramatic. This is the theme, right? exactly the symbol of the cross. I just show you here. 
I made the lines. That's how Baroque. Where is this here? If we connect the first note with the last note with one line and this with another line, they cross each other. And this it was uh, used as a symbol of cross. Cross means death in the rel in the cr Christian uh, religion, as you know. And the death. So here, two last notes of this. It's exactly a diminished seven. What Chopin use is using in his first motif, the first two notes of the sonata, my friends. It is not a coincidence. And now let's listen again to the beginning of the sonata. starts the first theme. <sighs> now, as I said, it was so difficult for composers, romantic composers, to decide to write a sonata after Beethoven. How does the last Beethoven sonata sound? I just played for you now the beginning of his last sonata of Opus 111. and prepare yourself for a shock. not Chopin sonata, even though we have the diminished seventh and then the chord. Chopin sonata, a chord. My friends, this is a pure copy. Chopin didn't even try to pretend that he is not inspired by Beethoven. And I, as, a, as an artist, as a pianist, as a, as a composer also, have the impression and the feeling that by doing so, Chopin, who at that time was also thinking about death, probably, uh, his own death, decided to write a sonata and decided maybe he had a dream or he wanted this sonata to be the 33rd sonata by Beethoven. I mean, to the next, to continuation of what Beethoven wrote. I think it must be some reason that Chopin starts his first sonata, because you must say this is a first sonata, you must know. He starts his first sonata from the motif that Beethoven started his last sonata. So Chopin is definitely uh, thinking about it. And now, okay, as I said, this is the si this was the symbol of death, so already we have the impression that this will not be an easy piece, and that maybe there will even be a kind of funeral march, and there is a funeral march in the third movement, after the story of two movements. The first movement, let's now go through it. Steam starts.
and we come to the second theme. Completely different, as it should be. One of the most beautiful melodies that Chopin wrote. Be patient, we go through it all. The first theme. So much drama. After this introduction, dark introduction, immediately we have a very fast... It is such a, a image, an image of horse riding that it cannot be a better. We have this... You know, imagine a horse ru running very fast. When the horse is running very fast, his his two legs first are because he's jumping, right? So his two legs are are touching the ground, and immediately after them, the back two back legs also touch. So it is for our ears like ta tam, ta tam, ta tam, but fast ta tam, ta tam, ta tam, ta tam, ta tam, ta tam. This is. So we have the image. Uh, it cannot be another image of some kind of escape, of some kind of uh, run on a horse. And then the first theme starts. I think everybody hear this motif. Ta tam, ta ta tam, ta tam, ta ta tam. Five notes. Two plus three. Ta tam, ta ta tam, ta tam. Ta -ta -ta. Okay, this is the motif, the only motif that Chopin uses to construct the first theme. Obsessively repeated. Is there an inspiration of some other piece that Chopin could have composing such thing? Of course. But here we have four notes. Obsessively repeated four notes when Beethoven constructs this first movement. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. can listen to the whole thing all the time of course this is the same very same idea and now let's do something very special let's count how many times in the whole first movement Chopin is repeating this motif this might be a very interesting adventure for us for me and for you because this is the only occasion we can have. We cannot count it when we listen to the piece because it's almost impossible. I mean, you can try. Good luck. But I think it's almost impossible. Let's do it now together. So. I play it a little slower because it will make it easier. It makes it easier to count. Okay. One. in the exposition. Then we have the second theme, then we have the epilogue, and everything is repeated. So all together, 54 times only in the exposition. And it's just the beginning, 54. Now let's 
I will not play because there is no first team. So let's go to the development section. 54. Development section, section starts immediately from the same motif. So 55, 56, 57. Exposition 98. 98. This is incredible. Is it the end? No, it's not the end. Because then we have something in the end. Also, after the epilogue, Chopin is repeating, is coming back to this uh, motif in the left hand. So we had 98, then we have 99. Na uh, 100. Actually, 103 about, if I'm not mistaken, because it was so difficult to count. So, uh, yes, so this is how this is how many times Chopin is, is repeating this motif. My God, 103 times. We are fed up with it. We have enough of it. We don't want it anymore. This is such an obsession, right? Okay, so this was the introduction. And now... Let's go deeper into the details, into the motifs of this uh, fantastic first movement of the sonata. But before that I have to wait until it will finish raining, because I hope, I think you can hear the rain. So I just make a, a new video, but I will cut it later together. Okay, I'm back. The weather is better, we have the silence and we can continue. Maybe Chopin got angry that we uh, got so much deep, 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 deeply into his sonata. Who knows? Anyway, let's analyze now, part by part, the sonata, uh, the, the first movement of the sonata. Okay. As I said, it starts from the horse riding, and then we have this one motif, which is, um, which has. Uh, with which Chopin constructs the first theme. Uh, repeated uh, 17 times, I think I remember, yes. 34, sorry. Yeah, I, I think I forgot. Anyway, um, many times. And um, 27. Anyway, then we have the main, the most important thing in this first theme uh, is the dynamic. 
Chopin is, a, is very precise in describing where we should play loud, where we should play silent, how we should construct this dynamically. This is the reason why I think that it, we must respect it 100%. There is no space to do something from ourselves. Unfortunately, there are pianists who think they are better than Chopin and they like to play differently than Chopin wrote. I personally think it's a total criminal. It should be banned. Because, especially in this piece, because Chopin knew best how he wanted and the dynamic together with notes is not, is a connected, is a united, it's one. And here especially, and now I prove for you, because I prove it for you because the, this is the message that is in this music. Everything starts piano, silent. For the, the third time, the third motif goes a little bit up and then goes down, so. And then down, and then it. Then we go up. Then we go down. Then suddenly we scream. Then we immediately are afraid that we scream and we are very silent. Again we scream. Again silent. Again scream, the most screaming. And again silent. And then louder, louder, louder. And then the second time the same phrase, which is to be played forte, the whole. Now let's listen to the whole and let's focus on the dynamic. to the major like it should be in the sonata and then we have the beautiful melody the second theme a total contrast to the first theme the melody about love and now let's analyze how fantastically this melody is constructed how symbolic also again it is the first Part, the first musical sentence is, co is composed as if it's a choir singing because we have no accompaniment. We only have a structure of four voices. Just listen. musical sentence. How it is constructed? The first short phrase the second short phrase and a very long phrase. So typical Chopin. is repeated but Chopin is changing accompaniment in the left hand we have the accompaniment the waving <laughs> D 
This accompaniment Chopin used before. Do you know in which piece? It's very interesting. He used it in his Nocturno B major, opus 9, number 3, in the middle part. It's exactly the same, like here. But this is just, just uh, for interest, because I'm, I, I don't think these two are connected, although it might be. Because the Nocturno Opus 9, number 3 is about love. Chopin was in love. Here, Chopin is hearted. His heart is broken. But the second theme in the sonata is about love. And the, this means that the whole first movement of the sonata, or maybe even the whole sonata, is a story about love and death. Isn't it deep? I think it is. So the second time when this melody is exactly the same, the first phrase and the second phrase, and then the third long phrase is even longer. Chopin seems like seems to not not to, as if he doesn't want to finish this beautiful melody. And I'm so grateful for him to uh, to him uh, for not wanting to finish this melody, because in my opinion it's one of the most touching and beautiful melodies Chopin ever wrote. Uh, the way how he constructed the third phrase puts him on in heaven uh, as a composer and human being. Just let's listen and analyze this endless ending of the third phrase. But let's start from the first phrase with a new accompaniment of the left hand. And now this is starts the long phrase. Chopin decided he doesn't want to end. Listen, it seems like he doesn't want to end. Maybe the, the relationship, maybe love, maybe hope. Listen. And we should have this already here, but we don't. Instead, we have and up. Constructed on again like the first theme on one motif, on three notes this time repeated. One two three, one two three, one two three, all the time. But without this stop, of course. And then it brings us to the climax, huge climax, when Chopin is just bang. <laughs> banging the piano with his fists like he almost never did hardly ever in scherzo number one in the revolutionary etude maybe and here also just listen to the whole epilogue <laughs> Position. So the first part of Sonata 4. And 
What happened next? It must be repeated. And here comes the question which I'm sure you are asking to yourself as well if you listen to many different recordings. There are three groups of pianists in this sonata. The first group of pianists don't repeat the exposition at all, which I think is a sin, it's wrong. We need to repeat the exposition because we need to hear the two themes again, just to make them, put them deeper inside us before the development section. And plus Chopin himself wrote the repetition, so why shouldn't we repeat it? He needed this. This is, you know, as if... Uh, because, you know, music is a piece of art that lasts a certain time, right? Amount of time. This is obvious. So Chopin knew it lasted an amount of time. So if you cut exposition the second time, it is almost as if you decided that you cut a, ha a, a hand of Michelangelo Buonarroti's David, the sculpture. Because you think, ah, oh, he has two hands, so with one hand he will also be equally be, be, be beautiful as well. No, he won't. The same is with this sonata. He won't, this sonata must have the repetition of the exposition. Okay, there is another group of pianists. They repeat the exposition starting from from this horse riding. This is correct um, considering some of the editions that have this sign there. My edition, the National Ekier edition, which is a critic edition, which is based uh, on many other editions that it's very original urtext and it's um, made after a deep analysis, has the third option, repeating everything starting from the very beginning, so from this Beethovenian motif. And this is what I'm doing. And I have a proof that this is uh, the best that we can do. And this proof I will show you in the development section, so in the next section. Now just listen how it sounds. When we, when we reach this climax, starting from here, is repeated and then let's go let's go forward let's go to the development section in the development section as I was saying in my previous video the introduction video about sonata form uh, the idea is that the themes are being developed so the composers is playing with the themes here we have the idea of a fight of a battle battle between two motifs between two themes so, battle between love and death. How? Okay. This was theme number one. Ta -da, ta -da -da. And then what we have here? What is this? Number two. Okay. After what? After team number two? Death. Again. Team number two. Again death. Again team number two. And now the second part of development section starts. Now we had team one, team two, team one, team two, team one, team two, fight. But now they start to fight really furiously because they are exactly shown together. Is it possible? You think how you show love and death, these two so far, um, so different 
I, I would say such different motifs as team number one and team number two together. Well, only genius composer can do it and Chopin is doing. Listen, in the right hand, we will have team number two. Of course, it is not a literal team number two, but the, I, the character, the construction, the, the phrasing is exactly like from number two, from maybe the second phrase. In the left hand we have I wonder if you if you listen to this sonata if you actually realize that before when you listen to this sonata you can write in the comment please and because I'm very curious if it is possible to hear it uh, so how it sounds this battle well it's actually difficult to to execute because right hand must play full of love and left hand must be very aggressive. And I'm only one, so I have to cut myself in half. And now the right hand comes with their first theme. to the biggest climax uh, of the development section maybe of the whole piece and to the proof that we should repeat the exposition from the very beginning just listen to this climax and i want you to focus on the left hand of the bass what we have in the bass here so let's listen to this moment i will go i will play the ending of the previous part and then I start this part. Okay, first of all, the right hand has ta -dam, ta -ta -dam, all the time, the obsession of the first theme. Left hand? Excuse me, one more time. And the beginning of the sonata. This is exactly the same motif. Why it is a proof? Because when we have something in the development section, we are bound to also repeat it in the exposition. Of course, this is my subjective opinion, but this is what I think and what I feel, because we need to hear it twice so that we can really understand this moment. This whole uh, climax is like a triumph of death, because we have the death motif in the left hand and we have the first theme in the right hand. And then this whole, the, uh, until the, all, the end of the development section, we will have an obsessively repeated first team. should have we should have again the first team this is what I was say, telling you in my other video this is how the tradition was first team and then second team which is called a recapitulation well come on um, almost 90 times the first team 
uh, and until now, repeated. How much more? We don't want this team to ever appear again. Com bye bye. Enough. <laughs> and thanks God, Chopin skipped the first team in the recapitulation, and he starts recapitulation immediately from the team number two, which was sometimes used also by Beethoven, uh, but uh, not so often. But it happens. Uh, so anyway, we have no team number one anymore. We have team number two, which I play for you now, without almost any changes actually. Then the epilogue, also the same. So I play for you almost until the end now. <laughs> We come straight to the coda, and coda is based on the first theme in the left hand again. So much energy, so much drama. So that's the second movement should calm down everything, but it doesn't. The diabolic scherzo starts with even more drama than we had in the first movement. But about this I will talk in my next video. Feel invited to watch it also. And now I invite you to listen to my performance of this first movement in a public concert in Tokyo. Uh, in, in Japan, I mean, I think it was not Tokyo, it was in Nagoya, uh, because I think I was very inspired that time, so please enjoy the first movement of this sonata in my interpretation. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>